In the week that the Church of England has been debating gay marriage, we mark the 25th anniversary of a vote that ended another controversial issue, women priests. In 1992, the General Synod of the Church of England narrowly approved legislation that allowed for the ordination of women. It was a decision that produced strong emotions, euphoria for some, and deep hurt for others. We will have the doctrines tested in every court in the land and in Europe, Your Grace. Just two years later, history was made here at Bristol Cathedral. I'll be meeting the first woman ordained that day, who recalls the difficulties women faced in being accepted. A friend of mine had her hand quite badly bitten at the communion rail when she was a deaconess giving communion. And go, Lydia. Gas, gas, gas. And at Trinity College in Bristol, I meet the next generation of women priests preparing for ordination. I definitely feel that I'm kind of standing on the shoulders of other female priests. And now we get to reap the benefits, don't we? Which is, <laughs> is amazing. And I'll be meeting the musicians expressing their Christian faith through jazz. <laughs> Women have given the church some of its greatest hits. All things bright and beautiful, just as I am, to God be the glory, all written by great Victorian hymn writers. But we start our songs of praise with a modern classic, written by acclaimed female singer-songwriter Darlene Check. I've left the city for the stunning scenery of Somerset to meet the first woman ordained into the Church of England in 1994. She's now rector of six parish churches. 
including St. George's in Bicknella, which dates back to the 12th century. Angela, what do you remember about the day of the vote in 1992? Tell us where you were. Well, I'd come up from Bristol to London because I wanted to be there outside Church House to hear the results. And the night before, we had a vigil outside Lambeth Palace right through the night. And I remember um, someone bringing out a very smart tray with a fine bone china tea for us, which was very nice because it was cold. And then on the day itself, I remember I was standing next to a friend who'd been a mathematician before he got ordained. And he'd worked out how many votes we needed in all three houses because there had to be a two-thirds majority. And I was desperately trying to vote on my fingers count. It was too close to call. The motion having received a two-thirds majority in each of the three houses of the Synod is carried. And it was just wonderful, um, incredible feeling. Huge relief, great jubilation. And it had been a long journey. Oh, yes. People felt it was wrong. I mean, a friend of mine had her hand quite badly bitten at the communion rail when she was a deaconess giving communion. Wow. And, and when did you first recognise your own vocation? I mean, did you, did you have a Christian background? My father was a rector, so I grew up, if you like, with a church in my blood. And I have to say, going to see my headmistress about what A-levels to do with it, and she said to me, have you thought about studying theology? And I actually said, and I blush to say this to you now, but I actually said, funny subject for a girl. Because in the 1960s, that's what it seemed. It but she must have seen something in me even back then when I was only 15. After years of campaigning and longing and hoping, finally the day of your ordination as a priest came. Can you, can you tell us what that felt like? It was really amazing. And of course, there were masses of media absolutely everywhere. Just a couple of hours ago, the 32 women who today will make history arrived at the cathedral following a two-day retreat. And I was a bit nervous. I knew that because my name began with B, I was technically the first. The first one to have hands laid on will be the Reverend Angela Berners Wilson. And among those... It was very exciting and we all felt we were where we were meant to be. It had been a very long struggle. Upon your servant Angela, for the office and work of a priest in your church, What was it like celebrating your first Eucharist as a priest? Did you know what to expect? It must have been nerve-wracking. It, it was really amazing and I'd sort of practiced it. Um, we had over 300 people packed into St Paul's Clifton and all the literally hundreds of pictures of that occasion um, that were in the media. The only one that got it really right was um, Parry Match. And they showed me framed by my two male colleagues, whereas everyone else just showed me. And actually that was so right to have, you know, men and women together. 